Well, hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here today. And well, I don't know. If you look at this image, I don't know that this is the first thing you would expect uh, when you think of Oklahoma City. Uh, it's, it's, it's obviously something that is, uh, it, it is contrary to, uh, to, I think, a common perception of what you would expect to see when you come and visit Oklahoma City. And, but this image is going to be the, the reality next spring. So it's a, it is coming. Well, again, my name is Mike Knopp. I'm the, I, I have uh, been at the helm, I guess, of this, of this effort to kind of reinvent the Oklahoma River for the last 10 years. Ten, well, actually, about 15 years now. And, uh, and that river, um, you know, probably it would, it would be nice to call it a ditch, you know, and which is what it was, you know, not, not too long ago. I, I can guarantee you that if you lived in Oklahoma City in the 80s or the 90s, and you saw this picture, would you think of this as Oklahoma City? Okay, this, is a, this, this picture was taken just, a, just about a couple months ago on the river. So when we talk about transformation, I think one of the powerful things about the Oklahoma River is it does represent a true transformation. And there are so many great things happening in Oklahoma right now, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City metro area, uh, but this, project on the river is probably one of the most unexpected things that's happened in the past 20 years. And um, I think it's easy to, to see that because, number one, this is where I said the, the, the city was born at the river. This is a real picture of the North Canadian River when we were settled. Um, and it, you can see the little boats there. So there was actually boating on the river back, you know, 100 years ago. And uh, it was actually a community destination. It was a place that people gathered uh, to, to recreate. To, they had a lot of community events. In fact, you know, the zoo was at the river uh, back then. Our first amusement park was at the river. So hopefully, as you see this, things have sort of gone back to where we started. And, but this is what happened. You know, this, this, you know this, is, this was the river that we lived with for decades in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma City. And it's because, you know, I think uh, you couldn't do much about a river that flooded you know, over and over. And it flooded downtown Oklahoma City. And it was very difficult to, um, to really do much with it when we had these devastating floods. So the Army Corps of Engineers came in and channelized it. And basically, they, took, they did a great job taking care of the problem. It didn't flood anymore. But it ended up looking like this. So we, they channelized the river, and we made sure we were able to get water out of town really fast. Okay, And, um, and they accomplished that mission. But what they probably didn't realize at the time, or maybe they did, let's give them credit, I mean, look, <laughs> that they created a straight section of river that was over 2,000 meters long, that was sheltered from the wind, that, had, that, that, that was right in the heart of downtown, or the center part of Oklahoma City. It set it up to one day be a world-class rowing and canoe kayak venue. So it only took about 50 years to get there, but, you know, but they did set it up to be that way. Now, again, to look at from the top down, this is our river, and this is the river that we live with for a long time. It, this is back when it was... Um, you could see there's sandbars, and it was really a kind of a field, a ditch. And we actually mowed it three times a year. I mean, that was a, there was a contract to mow the river, and that's real. Um, and, uh, but you can see this is Oklahoma City. You can see the, really the crossroads of America right there. I-35 meets I-40, right kind of the, the top right. And uh, this is the view you, you, you got when you came in from the, from, from the south. You crossed the bridge and you saw this ditch, okay? Well, what this, this ditch also did is it divided the community. Nothing like a huge landscape of kind of just a barren landscape to divide your community. And it did that for, for decades. And you can see that dividing line, you know, right from the north to the south. And people kind of stayed away from the river. There wasn't any, you know, if you're really hanging out the river, there's probably not, it wasn't probably... Probably not too good of things going on at that time. But, but, and the most action you'd see at the river, you know, would literally be a refrigerator floating down after a big rain or something. And that's the way it was for so many years. But thanks to maps, thanks to vision, and I think you hear a lot about vision here in, 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 in these pres presentations, that uh, we were able to reinvent the river and to embrace the idea 
or the opportunity that came with having a waterway through our city. Many of the greatest cities in the world have, have rivers through them. And so through maps, we created a low, uh, uh, some dams that were able to back the water up, and it turned this into this. And uh, this is the same location. That's the Chesapeake Boathouse at the bottom left-hand corner. And this is when I, was, I really got involved. And I have you know, some parallels to Katrina's story in that I was actually practicing law. I had another career. And an opportunity came. And I was passionate about you know, creating an opportunity to activate the river, to get people on the river in rowing. And, other, and, and it really kind of blossomed from there. And I kind of took a leap of faith and went from being a, a rowing coach, or went, well, I went from being an attorney with kind of a stable, you know, I was w working for the federal government, to a rowing coach in Oklahoma City. And, you know, we had a ditch at the time, okay? So, we loved, you know, people thought, what are you doing, you know? And I was talking about building a boathouse, and it was really hard to convey to people why we needed to build a boathouse on this river that, again, everyone grew up with it being the way it was. And so we were trying to explain why we would want to do something so, so odd. I mean, rowing is not in our culture. It's, it's something that maybe people associate with from seeing the Olympics or hearing about Harvard and Yale and the Ivy Leagues and the elite thing. But, you know, it's, it, it represented something to me that, A, could engage the community in, in a very unique way. We needed to get a more active, healthy community. Um, but B, it would create something that's unexpected in Oklahoma City. You know, and some of the, the greatest things that I believe you can do in a community is to differentiate and be different. And so we, uh, we created this, the Chesapeake Boathouse, from day one, because we had an opportunity to be world class. And it was from those days when I ride my mountain bike along the ditch and just kind of dream of what the possibilities could be, is I conveyed to everyone that, you know, if you looked at the, from the top down, and you looked at some of the Olympic venues around the world, whether it be uh, Beijing or Athens or London, um, and you look down, you would see a venue that looked, you, you see a, a waterway that looked very similar in that we had a straight section uh, and, and all we needed, all we needed was water. So if we had the low water dams, we have, we have it all set up to be something really special. But, but the thing that differentiates us, again, is the fact that it's downtown. It's in the center part of the city. And you know, if you go around the world to a lot of these international world-class venues, um, you know, usually you're going about 40 miles out of town to find this kind of a venue. Well, now you can walk from Bricktown to our venue, and we can be truly world-class as a result, which is what drove this vision. And thankfully, again, in Oklahoma City, uh, people believe in idea, good ideas. If you have something that you believe and you're passionate about, and it makes sense, I think we have a little bit of that pioneering spirit in our blood. And the idea of doing something so off the wall, you know, compared to what we're used to doing, that people embrace that. And, um, and that is that moment of taking the course. We could have done something very simple on the river, but actually going a little further and doing the Chesapeake Boathouse the way we did it, Kind of funky, you know. It's not. It's not like you would see in Philadelphia or Boston. It's a little bit of the Jetsons go rowing kind of thing, you know. It's and um, but you know, it, it it set us apart. It allowed us to show that a. It showed our community a. Number one, we believe in what this river could be. We believe in ourselves. This can be world class. Let's be proud of it. And number two, it showed the world that oh, we're pretty serious about this. We're going to do something like this and be bold. People thought it was a little. I mean, they didn't believe in it at first. And I will tell you, you know. I, my first little trip as a rowing coach was to Boston to pick up our boats, okay? We had to buy boats to start the program. Well, guess what? I, you know, I drove up there. There's a lot of, I don't have time to tell the whole story, but, you know, I had the truck with the Oklahoma tags. I picked up these boats from the biggest regatta in the world, the head of the Charles. I was driving back, and I was driving through New Jersey, and I got pulled over. And I'm like, you think they see these boats? That's the East Coast. They see boats all the time in these trailers. He got pulled over. He couldn't understand why a guy from Oklahoma would be driving these boats. You know, what was I doing? Did I, did I, did I pick up a trail, trailer from the head of the Charles and run off? And so I had to convince him that, no, we actually do have rowing in Oklahoma City. Well, you know, 10 years later, we are now, we are now the Olympic training center for rowing. Okay, we are the place that... We have this coming weekend one of the largest regattas now 
in the country is next weekend here in Oklahoma City. And it was, we embraced being different and doing something unique and world class. And, and by doing so, we created a scene and we activated the river. It wasn't about just building hotels and restaurants, which is great. It was about doing different things, adding the only venue in the world to have lights, stadium lights. We created a master plan with, with multiple boathouses. And I'm going to go through these slides very quickly now to kind of give you a flavor of, of, of this vision of starting with the boat, the Chesapeake Boathouse, but expanding the vision to go all the way up to Interstate 35. But every building has a unique function, and it, and, it, and, it, and it kind of represents our collaborative spirit. In a lot of other places, you have these kind of facilities that are really stand, they're a little standoffish. But here, you know, we have a community boathouse. We have UCO's new beautiful boathouse is also home to music and art, okay? Uh, we have the High Performance Center and the Devon Boathouse. We have an adventure uh, attraction area with the tallest sky trail ropes course in the world. We have a zip line and soon to come, Whitewater. And so you can see the Chesapeake Boathouse. It was that commitment to quality from day one that led to the finish line tower and the most advanced finish line tower in the world, really. And uh, which then also uh, led, and I showed the bathroom there, we're proud of our bathrooms for some reason. Our architect loves our bathrooms. So um, the Devon Boathouse, uh, the High Performance Center, home to OCU, award, we just won an International Architectural Award last month. Um, I'm sure that's to come with the UCO Boathouse as well. High Altitude Training Center, indoor propulsion rowing tank. Um, again, the most advanced boathouse of its kind in the world. CHK Central Boathouse, as I mentioned, with art and music and course, home to the, new, to the varsity rowing program, beautiful new facility on the river. And then we have the adventure zone with the zip line and the sky trail and the, and the new youth pavilion, which opens next month. And, uh, and then you can see this is the new youth pavilion and the sky trail. If you haven't done it, try jumping 80 feet off and just relying on that cable to slow you down. Right, It's worked so far. So, you know, you should come try it. You should come try it. And we have this, again, 700-foot zip line across the river, the tallest slide in America. There's the guy jumping off. So, um, And there's Splash, our mascot. <laughs> um, and then OU will be coming along with the boathouse as well in the future. And then we have MAPS 3 with the river projects, the stadium lighting, as I mentioned, but then there's this. This is the game changer. This is going to be something that nobody else has. And I mentioned differentiation, OK? When Oklahoma City will have an attraction that Dallas doesn't have, LA doesn't have, New York City doesn't have. We're going to have one of the most advanced whitewater centers in the world that will be opening next April. It better, because we have Olympic trials in May, and they are doing a great job. It's going to be, I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. This is for you. This is for everyone. If you've never been whitewater rafting, uh, you, you should start thinking about it. Get ready. If you have been before, you're going to have an experience here that will exceed any experience you've ever had, because we pack all the excitement into one spot, and we can change it. You know, we can adjust it. You can't do that in a real river. And uh, it'll be right next to the Oklahoma River, the only venue in the world to have a white water and a flat water right next to each other. But also, in the heart of downtown Oklahoma City, this is the view you're going to see from Interstate 35. Now, is that going to surprise people when they come into Oklahoma City or what? I mean, it's something that um, this, this vision, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having white water rafting with downtown Oklahoma City in the background is going to cause people to pause and think, wait, that's Oklahoma City. We're going to have a stage so we can have weekend music events. Um, you can see at the top right, that's actually, actually the Olympics in London. Our, our course was designed by the same folks that did that. It will actually be larger than that. Um, and these are, again, we can scale the experience, whether you've done it before or it's your, you know, or it's your, it's your first time. But it's about changing lives. That's really what it all comes back to. We're an Olympic and Paralympic training site, just like UCO. And we're very proud of that, from inspiring uh, folks to pursue their Olympic dreams. But all the way down, it's intergenerational, all the way down to eight-year-olds beginning their journey. And we've got 80-year-olds out dragon boating that also are getting fulfillment from the river. Um, this is our high school youth, inner city youth program. This is our world championship we had one year ago, uh, this past weekend, where we uh, had people, 29 countries, coming here. You know, I, I went from going to New Jersey and getting pulled over to now going to Germany last weekend and talking about bringing a World Cup to Oklahoma City. And still, when you're going 
and you know, showing your passport and you're from Oklahoma City, they still pause and they're like, what? You know, but, but as people come, they, we, we, uh, we always love to exceed expectations. And I'm gonna wrap up here. These are this kind of a smattering of the different activities. The head of the Oklahoma is coming up this weekend. Uh, very exciting. Um, and, and, it, and when it all comes down to, in my two seconds, it's about inspiring active lifestyles and getting people on the water being inspirational, getting, breaking down barriers. We have adaptive paddling programs with UCO, our youth outreach programs. And this is what's gonna leave a legacy. The buildings are cool, but it's how we're transforming our culture, creating a more outdoor friendly, more active culture. And I think that's gonna impact generations to come. So I thank you for the time today, and I hope to see you at the river, either on the zip line, on the water, in a kayak or maybe rafting next year. So thank you.